A proposal from Senator Lambie has been received under Standing Order 75 as follows. Pursuant to Standing Order 75, I propose that the following matter of public importance be submitted for Senate discussion. Australians have the right to know who is funding Australia's political parties, even if the parties don't want them to. Signed, Senator Lambie. Does the proposal, is the proposal supported? Thank you very much. Thank you, Senators. I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers in today's debate. With the concurrence of the Senate, I ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly. Senator Lambie. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. Australians have the right to know who is funding Australians' political parties, even if the parties don't want them to. I shouldn't have been surprised last week, which I wasn't. You think I would be surprised by this place and the greed, but here we are. We, we've just found out how much money everyone took from the big business and corporations during the elections. We're finding this out eight months after the election is done and dusted, and yet we're talking transparency. This is great. Too bad for the Australian public if there's any nasty surprises. They'll have to wait until after their elected people get elected. Australians deserve to know who's funding political parties, even if the parties don't want them to, especially if they don't want them to. The major parties don't want you to know who's funding them. That doesn't pass the pub test. What have they got to hide? You deserve to know who is buying political influence in this place. And when someone claims to be independent but then accepts thousands of dollars from big business, you have to ask what strings are attached to that. Who are they really here to represent? We all know these donations aren't usually made from the goodness of their hearts. They always want something in return. You owe them. Candidates have got to be kidding themselves if they say those donations don't come with conditions attached. Let's be honest. No one wants to upset the person that bankrolls their seat. Australians should know whose purse strings are backing the candidate before you head to the ballot box. The Jackie Lambie Network released our donation information during the election, and we've got a much smaller team than they do, so why can't they do the same job? Well, I can tell you why we stick to our guns and we don't take money from the big boys. Tasmanians deserve to know that no one is buying our seats. Every donation that comes through the Jackie Lambie Network comes from small individual donors. It came from the little old lady on the street who gave me five bucks for a coffee. It came from our volunteers who dreamed of a better future for Tassie and better representation in Parliament than we have now. And I'm so grateful for every single person who gave me and has always given me those five and ten dollar small donations because I can tell you they add up and I'm very grateful. Because of you, we got Tammy elected. We earned it. We earned it. We didn't buy it. Tammy went out there, she spent every weekend, every bit of time she had off, she went out there and she wrote, kept going round and round Tasmania when she could possibly, and she earned it, just like the network is supposed to. Like everyone else, I'm sick to death of hearing about these fundraisers that buy, that buy, thousands, but that buy seats for thousands of dollars in the name of fish and chip lunches, let's be honest. Last year, over $137 million was donated by just 10 individuals, 10 people. That's 77 per cent of all political donations made during 2022. Influence. It is influence. That's 10 very big influence you have now influencing parliament. Honestly, the lengths these parties go to to pull the wool over your eyes about their donations is ridiculous. Currently, any donation over $14,500 needs to be disclosed. But don't worry, have no fear, because every day you can give $14,499 every day of the year, and that doesn't have to be disclosed. No, no backing it up together the next day. You can do that every day of the week if you want. If a business or union is giving you lots of $10,000 for a political party, you should know about it. It doesn't take Blind Freddy to see what we need to change donation rules around here. And the major parties continue to drag their feet on it, but I'll drag them kicking and screaming to get things changed. Real-time donation disclosure, and there's no excuse not to have it, lower thresholds and aggregate donations are just the tip of the iceberg, but they'd make a huge difference, and I'm sure that Australians would be very happy to see this transparency going on. Some people have asked why, we're, why there was no information on the Jackie Lambie Network from the Australian um, Electoral Commission donation disclosure. Well, I can tell you why. We stick to our guns and we don't take money from the big boys. Tasmanians deserve to know that no one is buying our seats. We've actually earned them. That's what we do. 
I've always promised you that, and we do that. That will never change. You will never ever be able to buy or influence the Jackie Lambie network. Otherwise, my time in here is up. I'm so grateful every single person, once again, that's given us a five or ten dollar small donations because it's come from the people who really believe in what we do and know that what we're doing is right. And because of you, once again, we got elected. We got, we did get Tammy elected. And that is great, and I'm very grateful for that. And we will continue on that line because we will do that to lead by example and hope that just, just one day before I leave this place, that political donations are not sitting there to buy, or when you have doubt that they are buying influence in this chamber. That is where we're at, and that is a lack of trust in the Australian people. You guys were coming in for transparency and trust, and so far, nothing about political donations. Nothing at all. Seriously, start with that. Then you start with your transparency. You'll get your trust. Simple as that. Thank you, Senator Lambie. Senator McGrath. Uh, thank you, Acting Deputy President. Um, and, and before I go on, get into the, um, the, the, the the full topic at hand, on, on a slight tangent, I, um, Senator McAllister, stop looking at me like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, but I, I do. I, I, I want to. I want. I want. I want to talk about the. Um, someone's listening. Uh, yeah. Someone is listening. It <laughs> makes it makes a change. Um, so, um, um, I do want to talk about, and it is related to, to donations uh, in relation to, and it's related to the upcoming uh, referendum, and I'd like to say I, I welcome uh, the government's uh, change that it will. Uh, uh, support a, a yes and no pamphlet uh, being uh, sent out to every Australian household. Uh, regardless of on your position or on the voice, it is very important that any constitutional change is carefully considered. And, and, and that, to us on, on this side of the chamber, uh, means three particular things in relation to that, that bill that, that Labor have proposed. And the first is there should be a yes and no pamphlet. Because that goes to people's households, and uh, evidence supplied by the, the electoral commissioner said f up to 40% you know, of Australians during the election campaign get election information from written material that's sent out by the electoral commission. And the second second area is there should be an official yes and no campaign to help uh, with the compliance that comes with receiving donations. Uh, political parties, which are uh, professional bodies, but, but contrary to, to sometimes you know, popular uh, misopinion, uh, are not particularly well staffed, uh, don't have hundreds of people working for them. Indeed, my own LNP in Queensland has about 10 people working for us, uh, you know, three or four in the compliance section. And sometimes political parties do, do make mistakes when they are lodging their returns. Uh, that's always um, unintentional uh, mistakes, um, and, and the ECQ and the AEC understand that. And that's why it's very important for the upcoming referendum that there is an official yes and nobody that can assist with the receipt of donations and to ensure that the donations received comply with the federal laws that cover donations, and in particular in relation to ensuring that foreign donations are not received. And the third, third area that we, we, we do think uh, that, that, that there needs to be a change to the government's legislation, which also comes in under the aspect of, of donations, and, and that is that there should be equal public funding for the yes and no case. It would be disappointing that a government that, that talks about goodwill and talks about a country coming together would, would a cynic suggest, try and seek to gerrymander uh, a result uh, by trying to restrict people's access to information so they, caref they can carefully consider uh, the changes to the constitution. You know, a document that essentially is um, uh, the backbone, backbone of Australia, and we need to make sure that any changes improve Australia uh, rather than, than leave, leave to deleterious um, uh, changes as such. Now, the, the, the position of, of the Liberal National Party is we obviously do, you know, do support the current uh, regime. We do support uh, the, 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 the view 
that Australians should see where donations come from and that they should be, uh, the rules should be complied with in a timely manner. Uh, we don't see the need to change the, the, the current uh, regime. Uh, people who donate money are over a certain, certain threshold. Uh, they are publicly identified. Uh, most political parties, and my, my experience in Queensland is that is probably similar to, to Senator Lambie's, and she, she may not necessarily believe this, that it is uh, my party is funded by, by the good old raffle. Uh, every every meeting you go to, and Senator Scar is the same. If, if, if we don't turn up with if we don't turn up with a raffle prize, uh, will we get in trouble? Uh, and you can't win the raffle. You've got, you've got to redonate it back, redraw, and you've also got to make sure you've got cash on you. Uh, and, and that's off. That is how that is how branches are ac actually actually run. And what we should be doing is make it easier for people to get involved in the political process, easier to support the political movement of their choice, uh, rather than making it harder. Thank you, Senator McGrath. Senator Chacon. Very much, Acting uh, Deputy President. And I to rise to speak on the matter of public importance that's been raised here in the Senate. Um, and before I talk about some of the history of the political uh, donations reform at the outset, I want to say that I and Government senators completely reject the assertion that's been made here by Senator Lambie that all political parties have the same history and approach to uh, political donations. Um, over many years, um, uh, when we were in opposition, we obviously took an, a number of re reforms to this place uh, to try and make the, the system of donations a lot more accountable and, and transparent. Um, but also the assertions too that somehow. You know, the members in this place and those op in, in the other place too uh, engage in some form of corruption as well. Um, you know, I think Senator McGrath made the point about the engagement with the local branches and, and the members of our respective parties, uh, whether it be raffles or sausage sizzles or other forms of political donations and how we raise money in the lead up to an election campaign. There's no secret about that. But I know so many hard-working candidates who unfortunately weren't able to be elected at the last election who will put their hand up again, you know, put six months of leave on the table to go out and, and run for the party because they believe in the movement, they believe in the cause and they believe in representing their local community. Uh, and they'll do so by having raffles, they'll do so by having sausage sizzles, they'll do so by going to the local community groups and raising money. Uh, and there is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that. But dif different political parties do have different approaches and histories on this issue of political donation. Uh, and indeed, um, um, so I'd, I'd suggest, um, Senator Lambie, that you know, we should not all paint all political parties with Senator the same Chacon, brush on the Senator issue Chacon, of political donations. Pursuant to an order agreed earlier today, the Senate is about to move to the consideration of disallowance motions, but will return to this matter at the conclusion of that consideration, and you will be in, in continuation. Thank you very much. Thank you. I call the clerk. Um, senators, the Senate will now be returning to uh, the matter of public importance proposed by Senator Lambie, and I call Senator Ciccone in continuation. And if senators who are not involved in the MPI debate could depart quietly, that would uh, assist the efficient movement of the chamber. Senator Ciccone. Thanks a lot, uh, Acting Deputy President. I'm just trying to remember now where I left off. But um, I think where I was saying um, was that different political parties have different approaches and histories on this very issue. Um, uh, so I would suggest um, that we should not paint all political parties with the same brush on the issue of political donations. But I do thank Senator Lambie for providing the Chamber with an opportunity to at least reflect on uh, some of the, the proud history, I guess, that Federal Labor has on, on this particular subject matter. Um, you know, it was certainly back uh, in the 80s that when former Prime Minister Bob Hawke, who first introduced political donation disclosure uh, regime reforms, it was Prime Minister Hawke's government that established an electoral commission independent from government that now publishes details about how political donations uh, are, are managed and via transparent register. Under the political donations regime established by Federal Labor, donations over $1,000 had to be declared. It was subsequently a Liberal government that increased the threshold to $10,000 and linked it 
to and, and linked it to 10,000, and that's how we've ended up with the current disclosure threshold of $15,000. Uh, it was also Labor's amendments, while we were in opposition, that linked public election funding to ex campaign expenditure. These amendments uh, prevent political parties from, profit, from profiting off our electoral system. And of course, it was Labor who acted to protect our democracy from foreign interference, forcing the then coalition government to ban foreign political donations. But we know our task is not uh, done on political donation reform. I think a significant uh, theme out of the federal election last year uh, was Australians deserve um, far more integrity and far more transparency in our political system. Obviously, a significant component of how Labor is delivering on this front uh, is the National Anti-Corruption Commission, but further political donation reform is also important, and I think that is, has been acknowledged by um, uh, the Special Minister of State, um, Senator Don Farrell. In opposition, um, it is important to note that we did bring forward legislation before the Senate to lower the uh, disclosure threshold back to a fixed $1,000 and require donations to be closed within seven days. This would have brought our donation laws in line with community expectations and given uh, every Australian the opportunity to see who donates to politicians before they go to the ballot box. The Albanese government understands that political donation reform isn't just about uh, doing what's popular in any given sitting period. It's about setting up an effective system that meets community expectations and can also withstand the ine inevitable political shifts and changes that occur in this place across Australia more broadly. And that is why this kind of reform is most effective and most sustainable when it is implemented with broad support of this parliament. Thank you, Senator Ciccone. Senator Watts. Thanks very much, Sorry, Acting Waters. Deputy President. Well, last week we finally got to see how the 2022 election was funded and who filled the coffers of the big parties. And it shows what it always shows. Big money is running politics. While Clive Palmer's multi-million dollar donation to his own party dominated the news, the Labor, Liberal and Nationals also raked in $240 million in funds. Donations to political parties continue to reap rewards for the donors. It's why we've got weak safeguard laws and more coal and gas projects are being opened in a climate crisis. It's why reforms to hold the financial sector to account or to regulate gambling keep stalling. It's why governments continue to spend millions on consultants at the expense of the public service. In some ways, a bigger story about the donations that we uh, know about, a bigger story than that, is the donations that we don't know about. The source of at least 30 per cent of donations to political parties remains unknown. Now, that's just not good enough. Our current laws are full of loopholes to avoid transparency. Donors can contribute hundreds of thousands of dollars as membership fees to party-affiliated business forums and not report that as a donation. Donors can donate to affiliated bodies who then funnel the money to the party without disclosing where it came from. Shame. Donors can spend thousands of dollars on a dinner with the minister, but it's not a donation if they think they got value for money from the event. It's very easy to see how fossil fuel companies getting in the ear of the minister and getting massive public subsidies to keep destroying the planet think that they're getting value for money. Donations below $15,200 don't need to be disclosed at all, which inspires a lot of donors to make out their cheque to $15,190. And donors can make big donations to political parties and voters don't find out until 20 months later, well after the election. We urgently need donations caps to get big money out of politics. We need election spending caps to put an end to the arms race that makes parties so reliant on political donations. And we need reforms to ensure that all donations over $1,000 are disclosed in real time so that people know when they go to the ballot box who's pulling the strings of the parties that they're voting for. The Greens have been campaigning for decades to clean up our democracy, and we urge Labor and the crossbench to join us in supporting reforms to make sure the politicians work in the public interest, not the interests of their corporate big donor mates. Thank you, Senator Waters. I call Senator White. 
Uh, Acting Deputy President, Labor has a proud history of political donations reform. Uh, uh, as Senator Ciccone has mentioned, it was the Hawke government that established an independent electoral commission to publish details about political don donations. It was the same Hawke government that in first introduced a political donations disclosure regime, and under Hawke, political donations of above $1,000 had to be declared. This was the status quo until a coalition government got into power and decided to link the disclosure amount with the rate of inflation. This caused the disclosure threshold to blow out to the current rate of over $15,000. What can I say? I'm not surprised at the coalition, but I am disappointed. Nevertheless, Labor maintains its proud tradition of electoral reform in the pursuit of integrity uh, and accountability in government. And it is this proud Labor tradition that I point out to Senator Lambie and others that the donation issue she is talking about is in fact one part of a much broader and deeper suite of reforms that the government is currently considering. These include man uh, mandatory disclosure of do donations over $1,000, real-time reporting, reforms to the funding of elections, including donation <coughs> caps, and public funding of parties and candidates. All of these matters have been considered by the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters and are things Labor has been talking about for quite some time. Let us not forget that we took electoral and donation reform to the election in 2022, and we won. Um, as the Special Minister of State has explained repeatedly, for our government, electoral reform is about greater integrity and transparency for the Australian people, but it's also about consensus. The government wants to bring the Australian people and the parliament along with it when it comes to electoral reform. And in this, that spirit of consensus, neither myself nor any other government centre is going to preempt the recommendations of the Electoral Matters com uh, Committee. That is what the committee is there for, to review issues like the one Senator Lambie is pointing to, and the report back to the parliament with its findings and recommendations. Once that in-depth process is complete, we have the policy work done, we can and will act on these matters. But you don't have to believe me, you just have to look at the record. It was Labor that forced coali the coalition government to ban foreign political donations in order to safeguard our democracy from foreign interference, and it is the Australian Labor Party that goes above and beyond what is currently required by the rules. Our party discloses all don donations federally, federally above $1,000 because we respect transparency and accountability. In opposition, we brought legislation to the Senate to fix the disclosure threshold to $1,000 and require those donations to be disclosed within seven days. Of course, as is often the case with the Coalition on Matters of Integrity, they chose not to support transparency and accountability. Instead, they chose to keep the matter, I'm sorry, it's not personal, it's just political. Oh, a matter of political donations hidden from the public. But the Coalition are not the only ones standing in the way of electoral form. Clearly, there is a major issue when Clive Palmer, a person that Senator Lambie is no doubt familiar with, um, can spend tens of millions of dollars on false and misleading advertising in a brazen attempt to undermine our last two elections. Clearly, there is an issue when a sitting Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, can donate $1.7 million to his own party in an election campaign and not have to disclose that fact for over a year. So it's clear that reform is needed around the issue Senator Lambie has pointed to, not just around and donation reform, but spending caps and truth in advertising laws too. But it's got to be done right, and it's got to be done thoroughly, not piecemeal, not rushed. And so Order, I look forward to that report from the Electoral Matters Commission and seeing what it recommends in relation to all these issues. But because I know that the federal government, just like the Labor Party in every state and territory, takes donation reform and principles of transparency seriously. Just look at my home state of Victoria. The Andrews government, the Labor government, has introduced donation reform there. Donations from individuals and organisations are kept on a per annum and four yearly basis. Foreign donations are banned. There is a regular and transparent reporting system and the Victorian Electoral Commission is properly funded to manage the increased compliance obligation. I'm not saying that the Victorian model is perfect in any way, but in every way, but what should apply to the common and it sh that it shouldn't necessarily apply to the uh, Commonwealth because I'm not going to be preempting the the committee process. Rather, I bring up the Victorian example to show that it is in fact Labor government's lead on election and donation for reform. 
Actions speak louder than words. Let's remember who put in, who uh, legislated for the National Anti-Corruption Commission, and that's why it will be the Labor government that takes the next step in delivering our proud, on our proud history of electoral Senator reform White, to ensure integrity and trust in our political expired. system. I call Senator Steele, John. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Our community expects and deserves uh, to be able to access a GP and access medication that they need without having to break the bank. We also expect that democracy works, where politicians work in the interests of the people who elect them, um, not the corporations who fund their campaigns. Our public health services are as anyone who is paying attention would be able to tell you, in crisis. The AMA predicts that the elective surgery waiting list will grow to 500,000 by June. That's nearly one in 50 of our community who will be waiting for an elective surgery. Private health insurance has become, a, in many ways, necessity in this country. If you need a dental care appointment, if you need mental health care, if you need even basic care in a timely fashion, uh, then you often need private health insurance or you will be waiting and paying thousands out of pocket. While many of us are despairing at the current crisis, there is one group of people and individuals who love the system just the way that it is, private health and pharmaceutical companies. They love the system. Uh, that so, so much, in fact, that they gave nearly $2 million uh, to the Australian Labor Party and to the Coalition uh, in the last couple of years alone. It isn't hard to join the dots uh, between our public health system being under-resourced and private health insurers and pharmaceutical companies lining their pockets uh, of the major parties. The Greens want to see uh, this place ban corporate donations so that companies like Medibank, Private and Bupa don't get to influence the direction of health policy in this country. Let us have a health system for people and not for big corporations. Thank you, Senator Steele. John, I call Senator David Pocock. Yes. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. Uh, I welcome this MPI from Senator Lambie. It is indeed a matter of public importance. Spending at the recent federal election was a record, $439.4 million. And political donation reform is something that Australians want to see happen. I welcome the the review that JSCM is, is um, uh, undertaking and the government's commitment to dealing with this. Clearly, we, we have to deal with this in Australia. Australians want uh, more transparency around political donations. They want to have trust and confidence in our political system, that decisions that are being made in this place and in the other place are in the best interests of Australians, of all of us and not vested interests. And when you read through the uh, returns, which we get months and months after the election, uh, it certainly raises some questions why there are such large sums of money coming from gambling, alcohol, the banks, fossil fuel companies, and tragically, even tobacco is still a donor to the nationals. This, this, this needs to stop. We can stop it. It is within the power of the parliament to put in place um, changes that ensure that there are things like low disclosure thresholds, real-time disclosures. Technology has moved a long way and it is possible for people in a reasonable time frame to see who is donating to elections while they're happening, not after the fact, uh, you know, sometimes six months after the fact. Thank you, Senator Pocock. I call uh, Senator Babette. Thank you. Now, the Prime Minister warned on Sunday in a speech at the Chifley Research Centre. He said that democracy was fragile and so it needed to be nourished, protected, cared for and treated with respect. That's what he said. Now, those were his words and I agree wholeheartedly with the Prime Minister. But the PM's words beg the question, how, Prime Minister? How do we nourish, how do we protect democracy? Our system of government, where people consent to be governed, is fragile because it is built entirely upon trust. 
People give their consent to be governed because they trust that their elected reps will be acting honestly and with integrity. How do you nourish trust? How do you build faith? The answer is transparency. Trust can only exist to the degree of transparency that is given. Now, the United Australia Party believes in full disclosure of all political donations, no matter how large or how small. The UAP has one donor, just one, and we all know who it is. You can like it or you can not like it, but at least you know. He's an Australian citizen. He loves this country. There's your transparency. That is not the case with the major parties. Not the case at all. Some donations may not even be declared. Non-disclosure of donations, what does it do? It raises questions and it creates room for doubt, suspicion, mistrust. The very thing that undermines our system of government. If the Prime Minister truly wants to nourish and protect democracy, he will move to ensure that all political party donations are declared and are on the public record. Transparency creates trust. Trust strengthens democracy. If the PM meant what he said on Sunday, then full transparency with regards to political donations is something he should embrace without hesitation. Any reluctance to do so increases doubt, suspicion, mistrust. Let's Thank not you. undermine democracy. Thank you, Senator Babette. Uh, call Senator Hanson. Thank you very much. One Nation supports greater transparency and more disclosure of corporate donations. However, we are concerned that moves to reveal small donations and po political party membership will discourage greater participation by the Australian people in politics. It is often the case that even a passing association with conservative parties will see individuals, businesses and organisations attacked by the woke and the loony green left. For the left, anything to do with the right is illegitimate or downright criminal. They are incapable of tolerating any view which departs even the slightest from the orthodoxy and will try to destroy or ruin those who do. The Marxist Greens are the worst perpetrators of this intolerance. And what I have found from businesses who do support One Nation, they are in fear of giving donations because if they are exposed to donations, then they will lose government um, jobs, contracts, or are affected by the, uh, the other side of politics, whether it's a coalition or whether it's Labor. So there is Thank a dilemma Senator out there Hansen. for the public. Your time's expired. Indeed, the time for discussion has expired.